Good morning. So today feels like it's a bit of a landmark really. I'm not actually really starting the project yet, but I am off to the place in Southampton that sells metal to go buy the metal for the frame for like the build platform rotisserie thing. Uh, and also to be in queue to buy a lump of um, ply for the uh, build table. So, off we go. I've just popped in to, to get some um, filler rod for steel because I wasn't sure I had some. And these guys, they are so helpful. They really, really are definitely worth a visit if you're in Southampton and you need any welding stuff. Hi all, so I'm out in the garage on a, well first day of winter, it is absolutely freezing out here so I'll apologise about the, whoop, so one of my lights has fallen down I need to fix. Uh, I'll apologise about the background noise, I've got a fan heater going in here because it is absolutely bloody freezing. So today is kind of a big day and I'll show you why, stick around. So yeah, lots and lots of long bits of metal. Uh, afraid, as yet, this is not bits of chassis metal. Uh, this is the metal for making the build table, which is going to look like that. <laughs> Basically, what I'm going to do is build a frame with this big 40 by 40 um, and have ply attached to that, sort of bolted down to that. And I'm going to have this supporting it on a kind of an A-frame uh, that would have a, um, oh, I can't see where I've put the bits now, but basically I'll be able to turn it so it'll be what they call a rotisserie. Uh, obviously this will have a leg going in as well for support and it's going to be on casters because one of the issues with my garage is, well you can see that's a motorbike there, so trying to build a car in here width-wise is really tricky. Um, so what I did when I built the exo booster, I had that on casters as well. And if I worked on one side of the car, I had it pushed against that wall. If I needed to work on the other side, I'd have it pushed against that one, which of course always caused trickiness because then I couldn't get tools out the toolbox. But there we go. You know, it's it is what it is. If anyone wants to offer me a double garage or workshop to do this, that would be really good. <laughs> I don't suppose that's going to happen. Right, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to get on with marking up these bits of metal, then use my chop saw, get them the right lengths, then use my new grinder thingy to clean it all up ready for welding. Uh, then welding is probably going to be a job for tomorrow because I've got to go get the plywood and I've got a few family things I need to do as well. So I will put you up on the stand and you can have the fun of watching me in fast fast motion is that a thing fast motion or whatever the hell it's called in speed it up measuring up and cutting bits of steel uh, no i've just changed my mind about the fast motion thing because i like listening to the radio when i'm working uh, it's an adhd thing so it drowns out other distractions and of course uh not only is it the copyright thing but as soon as I start the video, the music stops, so you'll have to forego some fast motion. So I managed about 30 seconds with a tape measure, and it bit me. Bloody thing. Uh, is it looking like a build table yet? That's the, uh, the 40 mil sections all chopped up. I've got to get some 25 by 25 for the sort of side legs to make the A-frame. Uh, I was going to do it 40, but it seems I managed to uh, do a bit of basic maths wrong, and I don't have enough of those. Uh, and 25 would be fine. Basically, I mean, that's the same size as some people build the entire chassis from, so it's got to be strong enough on that. So the next job is to deburr all of this and get the chamfers on. Uh, these little bits are going to be like the pivot bit. So I've got to get the paint off of there because obviously that will need to be welded as well. And um, same with all these really, you can see all the 
pretty obvious burr on there so just clean all that lot up get it ready for welding so i try and explain what i'm on about with this pivot thing if you imagine this being one of the uprights and what i would do is on the top of the upright we'll have this welded on okay and then on the build table itself we have that welded on so this one-handed so that goes through there and we have a pivot so the build table rotate around there and what i would do is i'll have a hole in here and several holes in there so as i can pin it in position i, I don't know probably every 20 degrees or something like that um, then when I'm in particular, I suppose when I'm welding up the chassis, um, I can pivot the thing around and I think it would be quite useful. Anyway, um, so I've been doing lots of the, uh, playing with the new tool and I've got, oh, I've shown one bit that I haven't completely done. Um, and I've got all these, these are all the bits of the build table. They're all nice and chamfered off now, ready for welding. I just get the acetone out and give them all a good clean down with that, and then they will be ready um, for welding. I've also got all my scraps here I'm going to clean up as well, um, so I can get a bit of welding practice done on those, because I've not done any welding for a few months, so I need a little bit of uh, practice just to blow the rust away. Yeah. Quick little lesson in uh, types of or forms of metal. Um, so the best stuff and um, what the chassis is going to be built from mainly is what's called CDS. So it's cold drawn steel. So this stuff is formed, a big lump of steel, room temperature, and it's forced through a die to make the tube shape. God knows how much force is needed. But it, it makes for a nice strong piece of metal because obviously there's no joints. But also, because it's forced through, it also does stuff to the, uh, the like the crystalline structure. It's all kind of lined up to make it stronger. So this one is it's EWR, so it's electric electronic resistance welded. Uh, and although this is square, you can get it in a tube as well. And you can actually see that line down there. So this stuff was a sheet of, of metal. They've folded it into a square. And then they've welded down that line there. And then if we actually look inside. I don't know if you can just see the discoloration there. Let's see if I can get... There we are, look. You can see the discoloration there. That's actually the weld almost like a little weld bead there you can see um so that stuff is great mainly because it's cheaper um and you can get it in thinner wall thicknesses as well but obviously a weld all the way down here is a weak point and uh because it was sheet this crystalline structure thing isn't all kind of all nicely in line working for us um Needless to say, of course, the CDS stuff is more expensive. It's about, seems to be about double the price. So for something that's critical like the chassis, because of this, the extra strength, I can use a smaller size. Um, so it's lighter. Um, and obviously for the chassis, stronger and lighter is exactly what I'm after. For a build table, I'd rather it saves me a few quid so hence having this stuff so there we are there's a quick little lesson you might hear me in future videos waffling about cds tube and now you are an expert on it good morning so it's absolutely brass monkeys out in my garage this morning plan is i'm going to turn these along with the uh ply i bought yesterday into my build platform my pillar drill just make a very good coffee table in the garage. Anyway, don't get distracted. 
Let's get on with doing some welding some lumps together. It's all part of my lessons learned thing here. You see that sodding great gap there? That's obviously where I didn't have the chop saw uh, set very well to 45 degrees on these. So I've got a bloody great angle. Uh, what I would do with these, because I'm just practicing welding at the moment, is just fudge this. But obviously I need to make sure that that isn't the case on the, um, on the metal for the frame. Um, but one of the most important things in welding is making sure there's penetration so it's not just that that's just sat on the top. So if we look inside, it looks like the weld's going all the way through. Let's do a really crude test, one large rubber mallet. I declare that strong enough. Assume that B&Q's uh, cutting service has given me a really nice right angle here. It does seem to coincide. And then I've clamped the two tubes down. Now what I need to do is spot, 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 or tack, whatever you want to call it. All right, it's quite exciting. This is sort of, obviously it's not the car, this is sort of the first weld for the actual project. So, I now have a big rectangle of metal. And I've got, these would be the support legs. So there'd be a caster in each. So I have a caster there, caster there, caster there, and that would go underneath. Uh, I need to attach the plywood. So I'm getting there, another good day out here. We should be ready to rock and roll with this. Uh, the welding. Welding certainly less than perfect by a long way, but I'm getting there. So one of the main problems I'm getting with this, doing this welding is, because I now need to wear glasses for close up. The damn things keep misting up all the time. I've even sprayed them with like, va uh, you know, this stuff, this, um, anti-fog visor type thing that I always use to crash on it. It's helping a bit, but they're still misting up. Um, so if anyone's got any tips or anything as to how to stop the things misting up, that would be really useful because it will actually being able to see what I'm doing will probably help a little bit with this welding. Hi, thanks for getting to the end of the video. If you're not already subscribed, please do so now.